And what a night it was in Columbus, Ohio, everyone, as both UC Santa Barbara and Lewis advance in the NCAA tournament. They win the opening round matches, but Peter Jonathan, I got to tell you here, being in that stadium watching the matches, they sure as heck didn't feel like opening round matches. Like, I had to, like, remind myself to understand, like, hey, these aren't the semifinals or finals. Um, the top two teams in the storm are having even played yet. That's how good I thought the volleyball was tonight. And just get your reactions. Let's talk first uh, about that UC Santa Barbara Pepperdine match. Peter, uh, you had to love it. You're a libero. You had to love the defense that we saw in that one. Oh, yeah, that was one scrappy game. Um, both teams really showed up and both teams showed a lot of fight. You got to give it to Pepperdine, too. Uh, you know, with all the controversy being around them, being the at-large team to come in, they really proved themselves of why they deserve to be there. And Jonathan, I know you got some heartache tonight. Your boy, David Hunt, does in advance. By the way, hell of a season. Sorry for the language, kids. Heck of a season job coaching by David Hunt. Uh, you know, what's your takeaway, though, from that UC Santa Barbara match? I, mean, I was impressed with Pepperdine in the loss, but, I mean, Randy DeWeese, oh, my goodness. I don't want to pull an awful announcing, but first off, I want to say that um, the commentators did a great job. You weren't, you were obviously at the match, Vinny, but I think uh, Peter can uh, agree with me that the commentators did an amazing job to, uh, today for both matches. And, um, you know, I think we were coming from a worried about that th these matches would not be free to wow, these guys are great, and I hope they're coming back on Thursday. But to uh, answer your question about uh, this match, it, the the one thing that was, it, it can't really quantify that really impressed me about Santa Barbara was their soft block. Like Pepperdine had, it was, and we knew this was coming in because you mentioned that uh, in our previews that Santa Barbara and uh, Pepperdine are really good defensive teams, but that soft block just extended the plays and Pepperdine was just not able to put the ball away. And that was the difference in the match to me. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you what, talk about a way to end that match. You have a 30-second rally with Casey McGarry hitting on two right there. I mean, just, man, McGarry is showing why he is one of the best setters in the nation, without doubt. Without, I, you know, I, he and it's not just his setting. Uh, it, it's his defense, too. He, he's a great digger, and... Um, when I we spoke with I spoke with uh, uh, Rick in the uh, press conference, he more or less called him a coach on the court. Just how smart he is, and I he saw that time after time in this uh, in this match, and um, it, it's yeah, you know, I, I hats off to uh, Keith McGarry and, and the Gauchos. So we talked about the first one. Good showdown, lived up to all the hype. We had Lewis, Penn State. I, I think people are going to look at the scores and say, oh, you know, this was a little bit of blowout. N uh, not, not really. You actually have to look at the box scores, look at the numbers, don't look at 3-0 because this was some good competitive volleyball. Peter, at the end of the day, I, I was impressed with how Lewis was able to fight back. They were down four or five points multiple times in this one. Yeah, Lewis showed a lot of fight tonight, and – even Penn State showed a lot of fight, and they did really well in their own respects despite the uh, the sweep. They really brought the heat, especially from the service line and in serve receive, which has been their rock for all year. And, you know, I, I, I really applaud Lewis for the fight they showed, especially being down, really wanting to get that sweep, not allowing Penn State to get that momentum. And, you know, it's just one of those things that we see from the non-conference, uh, interconference play all season. It's the first time that these teams have met for the season. And for Penn State, that's a, uh, that's a hard matchup to come against for the first time in an NCAA tournament with such a big block that, that in, the, in this year, the EVA really hasn't had. So, Jonathan, you look at the performance of Tyler Mitchum tonight. 14 kills, zero errors, hit 700, five blocks. So would you say this is the greatest performance by a middle attacker ever in the NCAA tournament or the best performance ever by a middle attacker in the NCAA tournament? 
Well, he had some competition because his fellow uh, uh, middle attacker, T.G. Murray, was 7 0 10 himself. Not, not as good as 14 0 20, but you know, the fact that Caught both middles. No, I'm yeah. I'm what a bum. But yeah, I think that just speaks to the ability of the Lewis uh, passers, you know, be able to get the middles involved. That was just such a dichotomy about how productive the Lewis middles were and almost a non-factor to the point where Penn State had to uh, brought in a sub late in the third uh, set that it, wow, night and day difference between the productivity of the middle blockers on both teams. Yeah, you're right. And talking to Pav after the match, you know, his comment was at that point, you know, let's just try something. You know, the Mills have been, you know, burning us all day. I, I think for me, the point that sums up this match uh, was the game winning point in the first game where you have Fisher at the service line absolutely rips a serve that you got Kyle Collins having to basically run, you know, to the back of the court. Alice system ball goes to Ryan Cohen. And he hits it through a triple block to get to win. I mean, it's just strength on strength right there. And Lewis was able to prevail. So I, you know, I think you look at this match kind of big picture totality and you kind of take away, okay, what do we take away from the teams that lost? Well, I take away from both these teams is Pepperdine, Penn State, they're going to be back in 2022. I mean, I don't know about you, Peter and Jonathan, but I think that we saw two teams that could very easily be coming back next year in the NCAA tournament. Oh, I totally agree. And it, it just comes back to that, uh, not having that interconference play. I think, uh, you know, given next year, you have Pepperdine and Penn State getting that exposure early in the season, getting that experience. And I think that's going to relate into the tournament further down the road for them. Yeah. I think for me, um, obviously, so Penn State brings back everybody in. Uh, my spoiler alert is that I think that they will be one of the top teams in the country next year. I wouldn't even be surprised if we're talking about them in terms of national championship expectations. No, no pressure, Pat. Um, in terms of uh, Pepperdine, you know, yeah, they have a couple of seniors on their team. You, you're looking at a uh, Noah Dyer. He's graduating, but he actually got subbed out today. So, you know, I'm not sure how much that's really going to hurt them and you, you have all another year of under their experience uh, of experience under the belt i yeah i agree that them and maybe uh and then long beach state are probably the three teams that i'm going to keep an eye on next year but let's uh get to there uh after saturday yeah i was gonna say look at us talking 2022 and we have three big board matches set up it's the volley four volley four the ncaa tournament semifinals Whatever you want to call it. We got four teams left here, folks. We got BYU and Lewis. We have, and then we also have Hawaii and UC Santa Barbara. All those matches are going to be played on Thursday. And you're going to want to stay here at offtheblogblog.com for all your men's volleyball coverage. Have a good night, everyone.